Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Atari Vault. We apparently have a signed copy of Slot Machine, um, so you know we're going to be raking in the big bucks and rolling in the millions pretty soon. As soon as we sell this on eBay, I mean, they don't care if it's a virtual copy, right? I mean, we'll just say as pictured, and then, you know, it's their own fault for buying an empty box, and we'll just point them to our Steam account and say, you know, have at it. Um, I don't want to sell my Steam account, though. That means I'd have to start all over. That sounds like a horrible thing. I have, like, 300 games in my Steam account or something nuts. No, do I have only a... I don't know. It's 300, I think. One of my friends is, like, 600. It's pretty nuts. Um, and he calls himself... Um, shoot, I totally forget his name. It's appropriate. It's, like, Avarice or something, which is totally appropriate. Okay, so what are we doing? This We're playing saw machines. Okay. So, in slot machines, there are no winners. I think we should just establish that right now. If you want to go to Vegas and make millions, the first thing you do is you start a casino. You build a casino, rather. And then you just rake in the cash. Um, that's because slot machines are always, you know, geared towards the house. They're definitely going to win sometimes, but not every time, obviously. And it's going to be really, really super rare. Okay, depress the console, select switch, choose a particular slot machine you want to play. Each machine play field features a specific number of players and pay lines. Players, really? Game number appears in the upper left corner of the machine playlist. Playlist? No, play field. All right. First number in the upper right corner refers to the number of players. Second number refers to the number of pay lines. So, wait, wait, wait. Are we doing, like... Okay. I mean, I could... So, what I think we're doing here is like supposedly one way to win at slots um, is to get like a group of friends, right? So you have like 10 people um, and all of you like work off of a, a pool of money. Say you have like $1,000 um, and everyone contributes to the pool and then you go out and you just sit in front of like, you know, the 25 cent slots and you just, or even like the 10 cent or one cent slots and then, you know, the 10 of you basically take up 10 machines and you just, or five machines even, so you can do shifts, and then you just play. And the idea is that, yes, there are like 50 machines in the in the casino, or 100 or 1,000 or however many, depending on the size of the casino. Don't think any of them have 1,000 machines, but get the idea. But the idea is that, you know, you increase your chances as a group and then when the slot pays off which theoretically is more likely which i guess you've increased your chances by five or ten depending on how many slot machines you take over so yeah i guess and doing it in shifts actually helps because theoretically any one machine has a higher and higher chance to pay out the more you go into it i think it's actually a false choice so i don't think that's true i think that the chance is the same every time you pull the slot but i don't know i don't know I also don't believe in lucky dice, so what the hell do I know? But yeah, theoretically, so I think that's what we're doing here. Is that what we're doing here? It says machine play field and number of players, so I think that's what we're doing. I don't know. I mean, that'd be a weird thing to model. And I think the casinos, once they figure out that's what you're doing, they actually kick you out. Um, but I could be wrong. Okay, so you can bet, obviously. Oh, maybe you just is just paying regular casinos and yeah, no, 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 this is not what you're doing. Okay, no, no, no. So pay line, pay line's what you call the thing that rotates and indicates what the thing is. Okay, never mind. Then I was off my own little world. All right. Oh, so you can actually get. I didn't realize that a uh, diagonal actually paid out. I thought it had to be across the middle, or else it just didn't count. So you can actually, yeah, games one, two, and five only pay on the center line. That's normal, right? In these games, the more you bet, the more you can add to your bank. So that means like three and four pay on the diagonals or on the uppers. Pay on two, three, four, and five just seems weird to me. But okay, sure. I mean, that seems like, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's an option in slots now. And a lot of slots are digital. So they're going back to this model, I guess. This used to be just the home game, but no, this is now just like, I mean, it's still the home game. You're not doing real money, but 
I mean, this could be practice for like doing the slots in Vegas if you really want to. Game ends when one player's bank is broke. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And then, of course, the number of points. So it turns out cars are worth the most points. Um, hamburger, that's called the hamburger icon, in case you're wondering, is worth 100 points. And then we have all the other variations. All right. All right. I just got a text message. Hold up. I hate when that happens during the video, but... Nobody has to worry about that anymore. All right. So. And there's dining tables. Dining tables are only worth 10. TVs are worth 14. You think they'd be worth more. Bells are worth 18. Okay, so really we want hamburgers or cars, right? Hamburgers or cars. And apparently there's just no third cactus. That seems odd. Why isn't there a third cactus? Oh, for payoff games, so that's a different. Okay, 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 I got you. So jackpot, jackpot games and payoff games. All right, I got you, I got you. All right, so let's try this out, see what we got. I mean, basically, whenever I think, now that was weird. Whenever I think of slots, I usually think of the first space quest. Uh, the first space quest had a slot machine. I'm um, sure, what the hell, we'll bet 20. And get nothing, apparently. That was awful. Um, oh, I see. We at least have to do one cent. We actually did one cent there. Okay. Okay, we got a diagonal. I guess that kind of sort of counts. Here, we'll do five cents, I guess. We got a car. That's not going to work. But yeah, in the first space quest, you had to actually gamble in the slot um, in order to... Get enough money to buy a spaceship to get off the planet you crash landed on. Um, and it actually got to the point where it's like, oh, we're just going to crap out. Oh, no, we actually we actually won. That's surprising. Um, but it was actually really annoying because really what they expect you to do is to save your game while you're at the slot machine. Roll the slot or pull the lever, whatever the hell you want to call it. And then if you didn't get a result you liked, you just load the save and basically just save scam it all the way through. Um, that was pretty much the expected behavior. The remake actually made it so that you had a side quest where you could, I mean, you could still do the same thing. You could still do the same thing in the remake if you wanted to. But if you wanted to, you know, not tear your hair out and, you know, curse the gods. Um, okay, so just blank. I don't get this at all. Why would it be blank? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, if you didn't want to tear your hair out, you could actually do a side quest to get a little cheat device. And then the cheat device would just let you win like every time you pulled the lever, which was basically what you were doing when you were save scummy anyway, right? So, um, and then it would just, it would just stop as soon as you got the enough money to be able to buy the ship to get off the planet. I was like, okay, you know, you basically, this is what you'd be doing anyway. Here's just a quick way to do it. I think that made a lot of sense. Um, you could obviously, you know, do the save scummy way. I think actually the remake might actually detect that and just kill you every time you reloaded the game just to be safe. I think that's what happened. Okay, so this is basically like the most boring game in existence, right? I don't understand people who do slots on like a regular basis. I mean, I kind of get... The idea of, you know, we really want to get rich quick, but this seems like the most boring way to spend time, doesn't it? I mean, you just do nothing but pull the lever, pull the lever, and it's not even pulling a lever anymore. A lot of the slot machines just have a button. You just put your card in and everything uses a card now. It's like, um, it's like going to the arcade, you know, you go to the arcade that you don't get quarters anymore. You just dump a bunch of money and you get this card fed to you or you um, boost the money on the card and then you um, then you feed the card on the slot machine and you just hit the button to roll the dice or roll the slots or play pinball or whatever the hell else it does. Um, so that's, I mean, there's not even like the kathunk anymore. 
a lot of them still make like cool noises when you get close to a jackpot or you get two in a row or you know you get some kind of payout it does some neat stuff the attract screen still make a lot of noise i mean it's the casino is still like a super noisy place with all the slot machines but um i don't know there's something visceral about pulling the lever and some of the slots do still have levers on them but i don't know I mean, I feel like an old fogey saying that it was better the other way. I mean, it's not necessarily true. Oh, we're totally going to crap out here. Yep, we totally crapped out. Okay, let's change. So only center pay line. Let's do five pay lines. That seems weird. It seems like you should have an incremental, right? Do a, do like two and three, top and bottom, and then not have you have the diagonal. But for some reason, we can only do diagonal. Um, so let's do... Well, payoff gives us more chances. Yeah, let's do this one. This looks like it'll be slightly more interesting. Could be wrong, but could be. And would also give us more frequent payouts, right? Theoretically. I mean, possibly. You get at least two bells or whatever the hell. Two TVs? Would that have to be next to each other to win? I wouldn't think so, but I guess so. Oh, there we go. We got a little bit of money there. For some reason, I can't seem to get money from the left-hand pool. I can only pull it from the right-hand pool. So I don't understand that at all. Okay, there we go. I got two bells. Oh, that's really strange. I don't know why that happens. Maybe there's a certain amount of money in the pot. I mean, this is one player, right? So maybe... Yeah, maybe the left number is actually what's in the pot. I don't know. I wasn't paying close enough attention to the... Uh... I don't know. What, doesn't one car give you... I thought one car gave you points. Maybe I was wrong. All right. Well, let's try that again. Yeah, but I don't understand how people can sit there. I mean, I guess if you have the money and you're at Vegas anyway, the thing is, I mean, a lot of people go to Vegas to gamble, right? But it's not just about the gambling. It's about going to the shows. And so you've got to do something while you're waiting for the show. Oh, there we go. We got to pay out there. You gotta do something while you're waiting for the show. I mean, you can only eat dinner so many times, right? I mean, you can only drink so much. And while you're drinking, you might as well do something. And if you're gonna be hanging out with your friends, go and grab, you know, three slot machines or whatever, and, you know, the three of you can gamble while you talk to each other or something. So I kinda see that appeal, but I can't understand, like, going there every single day and doing nothing but sitting at the slot machine. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I sit down every day and I play video games, so, I mean, I'm not exactly one to talk. Video games doesn't even have a chance of a payout, so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, who's the who's loser now, buddy? So, yeah, I mean, okay, there's something to that, I suppose. I mean, there's at least a chance of a payout with, you know, but it's not even, like, an interesting video game. If there was a video game, like a first-person shooter, and I guess that is kind of what playing competitively gives you, right? Like, you play competitive Overwatch... I mean, that's a first-person shooter that you can actually get, like, real money at if you decide to play competitive. You also have to be super good at. With the jackpot, or with the slots, you just have to be lucky, right? So, I mean, there's also probably a little bit of luck in the competitive matches. I mean, I was just watching the Overwatch finals, semifinals, I forget what it was. Um, they were on Twitch, of course, and I like watching Twitch. Um, and that was really good, but I think there was one point I don't remember which game it was in. But there was one point that was definitely, like, he got a super lucky shot. I would have a hard time believing... I mean, I'm I'm bad at the game, okay? That's one reason why I haven't posted any videos of me playing Overwatch, is because I'm bad at the game. Every once in a while, I'll get a really good play, but then on closer examination, it's like, okay, I just lucked out. <laughs> I mean, I'm not good at playing, and that's that's pretty pretty apparent to me. I mean, I'm, so, what am I ranked in Season 2? I'm ranked pretty low. I think I'm, like, in 2,200. That's pretty low. That's below average. So, that that gives you an indication. And I, I played, like, half a Season 2 before I stopped. And I stopped because um, of various reasons. I had a bunch of stuff at work I needed to take care of. There was a lot of traveling. Um, there was a lot of social events that I just couldn't make time for the game. That happens. Um, okay, we actually ended up ahead here. That That's rare. Um, so yeah, so I think I played about half of season two, maybe a little more than half. 
And yeah, my rank, my rank pretty much hovered around 2200. I mean, I tried to improve my game. I tried to do better, but, you know, there's a certain skill cap. And also, you know, the time of the day that I can play is usually going to be weekends. And weekend daytime apparently is the worst time to play because... Well, that's apparently what's been said by um, the subreddit, is that the weekends are the worst time to play. Which sucks, because that's the only time I can really play. I can play a little bit, like at night on the weekend weekdays, but it's really variable on which weekday I can play. And, I mean... And it seems like that would be the same group of people, but apparently it's not. I, I don't understand anything at all, ever, apparently. Okay, there's just no way to get three... Um, Three cacti, huh? All right. Or I guess six cacti, really, the way they're laid out. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's only so much you can do to be good at a game, and I think I've actually hit my level cap. I mean, if you guys have seen me play Borderlands, I should actually start up playing Borderlands again because that was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I'm okay at shooting. Um, the trouble is... Um, well, the trouble is in Borderlands, first of all, they're NPCs, right? It's totally different playing against, like, real live people who are better than you in the game. And I like being able to line up my shots, but can't really line up your shots very well when you're, like, taking fire. Or at least I can't. I'm really bad when I'm taking fire and trying to line up a shot. I mean, I'm much better as a sniper, but really, snipers in Overwatch are... Well, they're hated, really. I mean, you try to play Hanzo or Widow, and it's like, you know, get the hell off my team, you loser. It's like, dude, I could be good at this if I'm just given a little bit of time to practice. I mean, even in quick play. Even in quick play, it's like, get off my team or I will murder your family. It's like, well, okay, I understand what you're talking about. You know, if this was competitive, i totally get you. You know, if I was a bad Widow player and competitive, and I insisted on playing Widow, that would suck. That would be dumb. You know, insist on playing... I don't know, May or something. No, May is actually pretty good now. Um, so I've actually stuck to, like, playing healers. Um, Lucio, Zenyatta, Mercy. Mainly because that seems to be... Okay, we apparently, like, hit the major jackpot here. Oh, yeah, I guess Hamburger was, like, 200, huh? Or I gotta stop hitting the buttons, because that seems to be resetting the numbers. That's a really annoying beeping sound. They should fix that. I keep hitting buttons, and it's not helping me at all. Eventually, it's going to stop, right? I'm really puzzled. So I thought that the left side was the jackpot. But apparently not. So now I have no idea what that even is. Yeah, I have no idea. The number seems to go down every time I lose. Yeah, it's going down every time I lose. So I don't know if maybe... Oh, yeah, yeah. So someone else is betting against me, I guess. Is that what that's supposed to represent? The two on the other side, so if he wins... I don't know what that means. How do you play two-player slots? That's what I don't really get. How do you do two-player slots on the same slot machine? I guess I wasn't paying enough attention to the manual. I guess you could say that if it goes the other way, then the second player gets it. Like, the first player, the player one is left to right, and player two is right to left. I could see that maybe... But from what I understand in the manual, there's no way you'd get cactus ever. Um, okay, don't I get points for two hamburgers? I thought I got points for two hamburgers. I just depends on what mode we're playing. But I should get points for like two TVs, and for some reason that doesn't seem to be paying it out at all. I don't know. I I think it's questionable that they need to be in order. Well, um, and then again, I mean that portrays my roots of I'm mean, the the only real time I played slots. I think it was once, and that was like, oh, I guess it almost be, that'd be 10 years ago? Oh my god, that'd be 10 years ago. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I was again bored out of my mind, and the only other time I played slots before that was playing Space Quest. And in Space Quest, if you get two cherries and they're on opposite sides, it's still counted. Now, granted, you know, there was a lot of anti-frustration features, like, okay, you know, you're only doing this to get the cash. How do I not get... I should get points for TV. I'm just saying. Two TVs right next to each other? I should have gotten points. But yeah, I mean, you were only doing it to get the money to buy the ship, right? I mean, it wasn't like you were trying to save your retirement or anything. 
If you're trying to see for your retirement, I tell you right now, slots are not going to be the way to go for you. So I guess this only pays out on... Okay, you know what? Let's switch modes here. Let's go to... One player, five payons. I guess payoff actually makes it so that you get... I think that makes it so that you get wins if it's only two? I, I don't remember now. We'll find out. Oh, there we go. Chactus. There you go. Oh, there we go. Two hamburgers should get... Um, excuse me? That should get a little bit of winnings. I'm not... I don't understand the slots at all, apparently. I mean, it's all... I mean, the machine knows, right? And that's one thing, at least, you know, with the... There we go. That actually paid off for me. How does that pay off and not the other one? Um... But that's the nice thing about the slots, right? Is that the machine will tell you when you win. You don't need to worry about it. The machine will tell you. Um, that actually, I mean, that is some attractiveness to that. So you can actually just, you know, sit there and just think about it. Think about other stuff. Not have to worry about it. Okay, for some reason that paid off? I don't understand at all. Bet everything. All in. Okay, see, we got money for that. I mean, it's only 20, but still something. So apparently this is like a... A nickel slots and nickel slots are probably actually where a lot of the action is there we go a little bit of that um i mean penny slots i don't think there are any penny slots anymore there used to be penny slots oh there might still be a couple of penny slots it depends on which casino you go to and again i mean my only real experience with casinos is vegas i realize atlantic city is a thing uh, monte carlo is a thing i mean there's a bunch of places all over the place where you can get slots but yeah, Vegas has been my only real experience for slots. And really, I mean, I don't see the attraction. Why would I go? They also apparently have slots on cruise ships now. And that seems like, you know, I mean, you're going to be on the cruise ship anyway. You're going to be starving for entertainment. There's only so many shows and buffets you can go to. I don't know. Cruise ships, I don't understand either. I mean, I can kind of get that you just want to sit back and relax. And every once in a while, you get to go ashore and, you know, do whatever you want to do ashore. Which I guess is just sightsee and... Look at the pretty sights and try not to get left behind. Um, I would imagine, though, that they'd have a roster now so that, you know, if you were scheduled to be on the boat for X amount of time, that they'd actually go and look for you if you were missing. But I guess that only goes sort of so far, right? I mean, at some point, you just got to say, okay, I guess he's not coming, and then you just go. But, yeah, that seems weird, too. But anyway, yeah, the, the cruise ships, I mean, mostly all you... All I see in the commercials are the buffets, the live shows, and then lounging about maybe swimming. But like a pool on a boat just seems like a questionable activity to me. Seems like we should actively try to get make sure there's no water on the boat before we go, but and not only that, but there's the there's the um there's the outdoor swimming pool, but also there's an indoor swimming pool on a lot of cruise ships and that just seems like really weird. I mean, I guess most cruise ships only go when it's, you know, bright and sunny outside. Oh, we're totally... Oh, actually, they were kind to us. Um, yeah, it just seems just seems weird on several different levels. I don't know. I'm not good at just sitting down and relaxing. There's, um, I mean, I read books. I sit down, I read a book. But I do that for, like, maybe three hours at a time. And that's like, okay, I got to do something else. And, you know, I watch TV or I play video games and really playing video games takes up you know the majority of that time and I guess they're just sitting around but that's not the kind of sitting around that you can do on a cruise ship I mean it, the internet connection's got to suck so you can't do that I guess I mean there's a certain amount of games I suppose I could play on my tablet but I'm not a big tablet gamer and really most of them are just casual games it's not like you can do like a decent first person shooter Nvidia Shield only goes so far, right? And plus, you need to stream from a decent computer to use the Nvidia Shield. It's not like a tablet in and of itself. Well, I mean, it is, but you know what I mean. The games aren't exactly designed for just Nvidia Shield and nothing else. You can't really do like a first-person shooter, I don't think. Maybe you can. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass again. Don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. I I would be struggling on a cruise ship. Not to mention that. Most cruise ships have, like, this horrible reputation about what they do to their trash. Apparently, they just throw it overboard. You know that giant plastic monstrosity that's in the middle of the Pacific, I think it is? You know how that got there? From cruise ships just dumping their trash overboard? 
And it's like, well, okay, unless they're going to do something better with the trash than just dump it overboard. I mean, you got to treat it the same way you do. I would hope they treat the septic system and that they would, you know, pump that into some kind of... Um, we'll pump it into some kind of repository on board the ship. And then when you dock, you push that into, like, I don't know, a septic tank or something? I mean, just pouring that overboard is horribly disgusting and means you should never ever swim behind a cruise ship ever because that would be awful but also i can't imagine having like storing that much waste but then again i mean cruise ships are enormous right i mean the titanic is a small little piddly boat compared to most of the cruise ships nowadays so I mean, they've got to have enough room to do, like, all the mechanics and stuff for it, right? You would think so. I don't know. I have no idea. But, yeah, they have the reputation for it. Unless I find a cruise ship line that's like, you know, we have all this great entertainment. And also, by the way, um, we don't, like, throw a waste overboard. I'd be all over that. How does, not, how does two cars not win? How is that not, like, at least a partial payout? I thought according to the manual it was. Maybe I'm on the wrong game mode. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna X out here anyway. Yep, totally did it. Sure, up to five pay lines. What the hell? Didn't we do five pay lines? And I just totally didn't understand. Maybe jackpot. No, jackpot's just gonna be boring. It doesn't have that many symbols. So we can do one player. I thought this is the one we were playing, right? Up to five pay lines, pay off. I'm doing this wrong? I don't even know. Okay, there we go. Three bells. There you go. And you know what? We've actually done enough of this, so that's fine. I've babbled long enough about random things, but I mean, this is slot machines, right? If you're expecting anything different than this, I don't know what you were expecting. Um, I mean, this is a perfect mini game that would go along with like, you know, Grand Theft Auto or I mean, Space Quest. I mean, that was basically all Space Quest slot machine was. It was just a mini game so you could, you know, do other things. You could play it just, you know, one off, although, <laughs> in Space Quest, if you ran out of money, um, you got zapped and died. Actually, there was, no, there was a Skulls. That's right. So along with the cherries and the cars and the bells and all that thing that actually paid out, if you got three Skulls, you just straight up got zapped and died. So, you know, the possible, possibility of a big payout, but also possibility of, like, the ultimate defeat. So, you know, there's that. And we just totally just, oh, we just got two more. That's it, just waylaid. Yeah, see? House always wins. That's one thing that this should teach you is that House always wins. We didn't actually get a very good payout on any of these games. Um, we lost out. I guess there was that one we actually ended up ahead. But again, that's going to be the exception rather than the rule. So, you know, if you're saving your retirement, don't blow it all on slots. That's all I got to say to you. All right, so that's Slot Machine in the Atari Vault. I can't imagine buying that game for the Atari 2600. I can't imagine going to the store saying, oh, slot machine, great. I'll go ahead and pick that up and play hours of it. I, I can't picture that at all, but someone maybe possibly did that. I don't know, but anyway, this has been Slot Machine in the Atari Vault. I'm PC Universe, you're PC Universe 2, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>